Good evening, friends, and welcome to LCC Live. We're here tonight on Facebook, and we want to just take a moment and just share some words with you. We are again in the book of Nehemiah, and we just want to take a look back at Nehemiah chapter 1 and just some things that we saw, and we just wanted to reiterate a little bit. And so maybe just let's take a moment and pray together before we get started. Lord God, we just come before you tonight. We ask you to speak into our hearts, Lord God. Just give us a rima, a word in season directly from you, Lord. Just speak into us and let your word just, just edify us and encourage our hearts and draw us into your presence and just be glorified, Lord. And we know that... Um, that you look upon the heart. You're not so occupied with the outward appearance, but you look into our heart. And Lord, so tonight we ask that you would hide your word in our heart, that we would have truth in the inward parts, that you would just uh, reveal yourself uh, to the innermost part of us and just have your way in, in, uh, inside of us through your word. So we commit this unto you in the most holy name. Bless all that are gathered to, uh, tonight. Maybe they're around a computer or maybe they have it on a big screen in their house. But Lord, whatever it is, just, um, just touch people's hearts. Reach into people's living rooms, uh, into their kitchens, Lord, and just, just touch people. Lord, we, uh, as the people of God, we need a touch from you tonight. So we commit these words unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, as always, if you're here, just uh, send us a chat. Uh, let us know that, that you're watching. Uh, we got some faithful people here tonight uh, in, the, in the seats, so it's good to see people. Good to see you tonight. Amen. And so this is a good night just to be alive. I don't know about you. I, uh, I, have, to, I have to confess. You don't mind if I take a moment and just confess some sins? Uh, well, we're only here an hour, so I don't know if I can get them all. But, but, um, but tonight I, I came back. I was home, and then I, I looked out, and it was such a beautiful evening. I thought, wow, I might just want to stay home tonight. Like, and so I, I reached out to Rebecca. I said, Rebecca, you don't mind doing Facebook Live tonight, do you? Just share a few words that are on your heart. And, and she, um, she said, um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 sure, Pastor. And, but then we reconsidered, and we didn't want to put that burden upon her. So we came down tonight, amen? So praise the Lord for that. We're excited to be with you. Send me a chat. Let me know you're here. Just say, God bless the church family. God bless all that are here gathering together in the name of Christ. Hey, maybe there's somebody uh, listening in tonight that is not from Newark. Hey, send us a chat. Let us know you're here. I don't know if we have anybody from Chile or any other place uh, listening tonight, but we're so excited for whoever is here. So praise the Lord. Hey, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, we know that uh, in Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4, and we keep reiterating this because we see this as such an important pattern. When, when uh, Hanani, the brother of Nehemiah, uh, came to him in the king's court, uh, Nehemiah said, how is it uh, back in Judah? Uh, how is it for the inhabitants of Jerusalem? And they said, the people are greatly distressed right? The walls are broken down, right? As we can see, the walls were broken down and the gates were on fire. The city was burning and Nehemiah's heart was broken and he fell down right then on his knees and he began to pray. Now we know from chapter one to chapter two, uh, from the month of Chislu to the month of Nisan was four months, right? And, and so really it was four months of fasting and prayer. And Nehemiah took time to confess uh, the sins of the people and uh, his father's house, he says, and, and really for the nation of Israel. And, and really what he, what he was doing was he was recognizing the reality that, that God had made them a promise in, Deuteron in uh, uh, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, uh, 26, Deuteronomy, 
chapter uh, 28 and 29. And he said, hey, if you do these things, if you keep my commands, if you keep my statutes, if you walk in my ways, all these blessings will be upon you. But if you rebel in your heart, right? If you go your own way, if you turn to idolatry, if you worship other gods, then all these curses will come upon you. And that's what happened. And we know that the southern, the First, the northern kingdom was taken into captivity. Then the southern kingdom taken into captivity uh, by Babylon. And Babylon took them into captivity. And then uh, the Babylonians were taken over by the the Medes and the Persians. And now uh, Nehemiah is is serving the king as a cupbearer. Really, he was like a chief of staff. He was a very gifted man, much like Daniel, uh, you know, like a prime minister uh, to the king. And he becomes sad in his presence. And, and, and the king says, what is going on? Why are you sad in my presence? That was actually against the law. And, and he said, this is, this is sadness of heart. And immediately, Nehemiah said, no, let the king live forever. I, I'm not angry with you. I, I don't want to take your life. Um, I'm not against you. I'm for you. But how can I not be in distress when I've heard of the state of my people that are back in Jerusalem? Right, my the walls are are the gates are on fire. The walls are torn down. The people are in great distress. These are my people, and I've heard the state of my people, and it's broken my heart. Right, and this is really quite quite a thing. And we just said that in this four months of fasting and prayer and confessing sins, that God was doing a deep work. He was doing a deep work in Nehemiah's heart. He was doing a deep work uh, renewing the hearts of the people to prepare them to be motivated to go back to Jerusalem, to to leave captivity. They They were strangers. They were taken captive. And now it's time. God is bringing the people of God back. And he's, he's brought a remnant back. They've been in captivity 70 years. And now he, he's brought a small remnant back, a small group of people returned to Jerusalem. And they're under intense siege, right? But he's going to bring more people back. And Nehemiah is going to lead another group. Ezra has brought some people back, and he's begun teaching the Word of God. And and he's begun to pray and fast and challenge the people and teach the people the Word of God. But the people's hearts have to be renewed back to God so that they will be ready to go back and to follow the Lord fully. God's doing a new thing in Israel. Right? And he needed the people to renew their hearts before the Lord. Amen? Right? This is, this is so important, folks. I love this. You know, in Acts 3.19, you know, it says that repent, right? And a time uh, of renewal will come from the presence of of the Lord. Uh, A time of restitution, right? God will do a new thing. He'll wash your heart. If if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen? Right? But, But God wants to renew the heart. A time of refreshing, it says in Acts 3.21. A time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come in. And you know, I just think this is, this is so important. You know, uh, many people, it's been a practice of many people that, that at the changing of every season, when you go from summer to fall, right, to take a time and reflect and, and confess sins and take a time to fast and sanctify yourself, set yourself apart unto God, right? To, to get ready for this new season, a new time uh, in your life. Remember uh, in Joshua, um, the people were um, getting ready to, you know, they had just crossed um, the, the river uh, Jordan and they were getting ready to go up against um, Jericho, the city of Jericho. And, and they stopped and they sanctified themselves before the Lord right? May, may I just ask you a question? Have, have you taken time recently to sanctify yourself before the Lord, to set yourself apart unto God? 
just to take a little time away from the busyness of your schedule, from your current responsibilities, and just reflect and say, you know what? I belong to the Lord. The Lord has called me unto himself. I am his people. I am part of his people. I'm the sheep of his pasture. And, and I want to I wanna make sure that I'm aligned with him. I'm rightly related to him. I like to say, you know, I'm rightly related to him. I want to set myself apart unto the Lord. Maybe it takes a time of fasting and prayer to just confess sins, to be renewed, to let a time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord wash over you renew you, right? Prepare you for a new season. You know, this Sunday morning, we're going to be uh, taking communion, right? Because this Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month. And that, that is our practice. Every first Sunday of the month, we partake of communion, right? And, and we believe in the renewal view of communion, right? In other words, not, not transubstantiation, not consubstantiation, not just the historic view, but we believe in a renewal right? A a renewal takes place, right? In other words, transubstantiation, uh, believe that when the priest blesses the bread and the wine, that it actually becomes the body of Christ, right? And it it takes the blessing of the priest. And Martin Luther, others said, no, that's not accurate, you know, uh, is, is you can practice the presence of the Lord yourself, right? That's consubstantiation. When you practice the presence of the Lord is, is, that bread, that wafer of bread, and that, that grape juice becomes the body and, and blood of Jesus Christ. And we don't believe that. And some would say, Calvin would say, you know, if you just remember historically what Jesus did for you, right, that, that you know, that, that is enough. But really what we believe is, is we don't believe that the bread and the wine becomes the actual uh, body or blood of Jesus Christ, but we believe when, when you practice the presence of God and think of who he is and you actively remember who Jesus Christ is and what he did for you, he washes over you, he renews you right? And, and so this is a practice that we do. The first Sunday of every month, we gather together as the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, and we worship him, we sing uh, songs unto him, but then we take a moment, we take, partake of the Lord's Supper, right? We confess any known sins. This is something we do on a regular basis, right? Uh, once a month, right? To just get renewed in his presence. Let him wash over us and renew us to sanctify us, to set us apart unto his name as the people of God so that we can be prepared to hear his voice, right? Remember in Hebrews chapter 3, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation when they provoke the Lord 10 times, right? No, we, we don't want to be that way. We, we want to be people that say, Lord, we are your servants. We hear your voice. We want to be attentive to your will, right? This is the heart of Nehemiah. This is the heart of Daniel, right? This was the heart of uh, the little boy Samuel, right? Um, you know, this, this is the heart. This is the heart Uh, of the people of God is we want to be available to hear his voice. We want God to renew us, right? Sometimes we fall into bad habits. Sometimes we're overtaken in a fault as Galatians 6, 1 and 2 talks about, right? Uh, uh, Sometimes we just get stuck. Sometimes we find ourselves in a far country like the, what we call the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. We find ourselves far from God right? And, and there's a time to come home, right? And, and let God wash over you. Let God renew you. Let him quicken you, right? I, I love how the psalmist said it in Psalm 119, 25, right? Uh, quicken me according to the word, thy word. My soul cleaves to the dust. Like I have a proclivity to cling to the things of this world. I have a proclivity to cling to my natural thinking, to my own way. I can get stubborn. I can harden my heart, right? No, I don't want to do that. I want God to wash over me. I want him to renew me. I want my heart to be tender, supple, right? Uh, Freshly renewed, 
right? So that like was said of David, he was a man after God's own heart. God could speak to him. He responded to the things of God, right? He, was, he could hear God speak to him, amen? Can you send me an amen in the chat tonight? Can you send me a chat and just say, I want my heart to be tender before God. I want to have a heart after God. I want God to be able to look upon my heart and say, there's a man, there's a woman after mine own heart. Do you have a heart after God? What is on your heart? What, what are you seeking? I love how Jesus would say that to his disciples. They, they started following him. And said, he said, what are you seeking? Right? What are, what are you after? What do you hope to get from me? If you're following Jesus, what do you want? Hopefully, you're like John. You want to put your head right on his chest. You want to hear his heartbeat, right? You want to hear Jesus' heartbeat. You want him to speak his word into you, right? You want to be set apart unto him. You want him to renew your heart. You know what's so beautiful about that is as Nehemiah confessed the sins of the people, God was working in their heart over that four-month period of time. And Nehemiah was able to say, hey, come, let us go build the wall. Hey, there's work to do back in Jerusalem. Let us go. God has prepared provision and protection and people, right? And he's given us a purpose right? And it's time to go back and to rebuild. And the people agreed. They had buy-in. They said, yeah, come on, let's go. We're with you. Let's do it together. And three times in that first chapter, as we see Nehemiah cast the vision, the people bought in. They said, hey, we're in. We're willing to go with you. And then they said, okay, let's go and do it together right? And I love this because really what I was reflecting on today was they had, they had made a decision in their heart. They had resolved that four months of fasting and prayer drove that, the, the time of struggle drove the vision that was in their head deep into their heart, right? So it was no longer just something in their head that they said, hey, this would be a good thing to do. Hey, maybe we'll try this for a while. Hey, maybe we'll do that for a while. No, this was a resolve. This was something that, that they had decided in their heart that they were going to do. You know, last week we talked just a little bit. We mentioned it often, but George Mueller, who was who was a man of prayer, and, and he had an orphanage in India, and many times the children didn't have food to eat. And, and he's known for this quote. He said, once I'm convinced a thing is right, I keep praying for it until it comes to pass. In other words, he had a resolve in his heart. He knew it was right to feed the children. He knew it was right to run this orphanage. And so he would just keep praying and praying and praying until his requests were heard by God. Uh, maybe it was those golden bowls that we see in the book of Revelation, right? And his prayers just kept going up. <clears throat> uh, the golden bowls held the prayers of the saints and, and the people of God keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. And those, those bowls are filled. And when those bowls are filled, then answers come from the throne of God. George Mueller said, once I'm convinced a thing is right, I keep praying for it until it comes to pass. You know, <clears throat> This is so, such an important thing because sometimes we can dwell in the valley of indecision, right? Have you ever been there? You know, should I go or should I stay? You know, should I move on? Should I follow the Lord? You know, I, I'm not sure. May, maybe, I'll just, maybe I'll just wait here in the valley of indecision. You know, that's a dangerous place to be, right? Right? Uh, James 1.8 says, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, don't expect that he should receive anything from the Lord, right? I, I love how, you know, Elijah said it, you know, in 1 Kings 18.21, right? He says, how long will you halt or how long will you waver between two opinions, Right? If the Lord is God, serve him, follow him, give him your whole heart, give him your full allegiance. Right? If Baal be God, 
then go and serve him, right? Or Joshua, Joshua 24, 15, right? Remember what he, what he said? He challenged the people. If you think it's evil to serve the Lord, then maybe you want to serve the God, the gods of your fathers that were before the flood. Or maybe the God of the Amorites who's in the land in which you dwell. He said, but I've made a decision. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? Can you put it in the chat? You know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Or how about Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, verse 19 and 20. You know, uh, Moses called the people and they're getting ready, you know, to go into the promised land. And, and he says, you know, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, right? If the Lord be God, serve him, right? I, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you may live, that you may love, that you may love the Lord your God and obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them, right? See, this is what's happening in this four months of fasting and prayer is Nehemiah, his heart is being prepared. He's preparing to go. Resolve is being formed in his heart and it has to be. Because when he gets there, as soon as he goes, as, as soon as he goes back and he goes around the walls and he finally announces, let us build, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Immediately, there's opposition against him. As soon as he says, you know what, we're going to do something. They looked and they said, is, is, this, is this man going to try to protect those feeble Jews? Will he try and rebuild the walls? Will he try and sanctify the people of God? Will he try and bring protection to the people of God? Right? Immediately they felt threatened because, you know, there was somebody standing up on behalf of God's people. Right? Opposition would come. But you know what? The resolve that Nehemiah gained in Four months of fasting and prayer, having his heart renewed before the Lord, would give him that determination that he would need to finish the task that God had called him to. You know, it's, it's an easy thing to start things. It's easy to start something. It's not easy to finish, right? That's why Solomon said, the end of a matter is better than the beginning right? It's easy to start well. It's not easy to finish well, right? And, and you know, this, this is a really important principle, you know, in God's word and among God's people. It's not enough to start well. We want to finish well, right? And, and here, you know, is Israel, right? They, they've turned to idolatry. They've rebelled against the Lord. They've been taken into captivity. And now there's a time of renewal, a time to revitalize the people of God. Ezra is reading the word of God aloud. He, he's got small groups forming. He's got people gathering. He's teaching them, right? They're teaching one another. They're discussing the word of the Lord. Some of them would stand for hours and listen to Ezra as he made a pulpit and he, and he stood above the people on a wood platform and he taught the people and he spoke the word of God. And the heart of the people was being renewed renewed unto God. It was a time of revitalization, a time to revive the people of God. What a, what a beautiful thing. What an incredible thing. And Ezra and Nehemiah had been prepared, just like many people of God, just like, you know, Esther, Queen Esther. Remember what Mordecai said to her in Esther 4.14, right? It could be that you have been called into the kingdom for such a time as this right? Maybe God is calling you, right? Maybe God is calling you to be part of revitalizing his church. Well, if he's going to call you, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to, he wants to renew your heart. 
He's going to call you to a time of prayer because, you know, everything happens with prayer and nothing without prayer, right? It, it, when, when God's people call on his name, he hears, right? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 14, Jesus said it, right? The words of Jesus Christ. So if God's calling you, to be part of his revitalization, it's going to begin with prayer. It's going to begin with him washing over you, renewing you, setting you apart, sanctifying you, and building a deep resolve in your heart that this isn't just a good idea. It's not just something that we're going to start. He wants to build in you a resolve that what we set out to do is we're going to finish. We're going to do this thing. When you get to chapter 4 in Nehemiah in just a couple of weeks, right, is you're going to find out the people had a deep resolve. They had determined they were going to build those walls. They went back and repaired the gates. We're going to talk about that this week. They went back and Nehemiah set families over each gate and each one took responsibility for one small part of rebuilding the wall. They divided the work up. They delegated it out. Right, And they began to rebuild those gates and reassemble the gates so that they could keep the enemies out. Right, What a beautiful story this is in Nehemiah. It's a story of revitalization for the people of God. And so tonight I, I determined I wasn't going to be long, but I, I wanted just to share this with you tonight. And I, I just really hope that God is working in you right? Can you send me a chat if God is working in you? If God is, is calling you to be part of, of revitalizing his work, his church, his people, right? That, that maybe you have a word in season for someone who's weary. Maybe you're holding forth the word of life in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, right? What has God called you to do? What is your part right? What is God calling you to do? If he's calling you to do something, I'll guarantee he's going to first call you. He's going to call you to himself, right? You're going to be called to commune with him, to confess sins. Maybe it's a time of prayer. Maybe it's a time of fasting. Maybe you're going to sacrifice something. You're going to let go of something, right? To, to really make a statement before God. Doesn't earn merit, but you're making a statement before the Lord that I want to be used of you. This is so important to me that I want to give up something that is important to myself so that I show you that I am serious about being used of you. I want to get your attention, Lord. I want you to recognize that my heart is after you. I want to be used of you. And you let the Lord wash over you. Let him renew you. You let him, you know, enlighten your mind and, and quicken your heart, right? And so that you can hear his voice, that you're sensitive. That's what happens in times of fasting. You become very sensitive to hear God's voice, right? Because remember, 1 Chronicles chapter 19, he speaks in a still, small voice, right? And he wants to speak to you. He wants to first renew your heart so that you can uh, be called to him so he can renew you and sanctify you and set you apart and use you to bring new life to his people. Amen? Can you say new life? New life to his people. New life to his people. God is calling us to make a decision, right? Don't, don't get caught in the valley of indecision, right? You say, I'm not gonna stay here right? I, I want to move forward. I, I, can't, I can't go back, right? I, I'm dissatisfied with the way things were, right? I don't want to stay here. I want to go forward, right? I'm not going to stay in the valley of indecision. I want to move forward with the people of God. I want to lead the people of God forward. I want to see God affect his will among the people of God. Amen. 
Well, tonight we're going to close in prayer, but if you have a question, if you have something that you'd like to add to the conversation, send me a chat right now. I have some faithful people in the back, and, and they know how to read. They can, they can read those chats. They will shout them out to me. I'd love, I'd love if you have a question tonight, maybe something about Nehemiah, uh, maybe about something we were talking about last week or this Sunday or, or tonight, um, but you know, we'd love to answer that. We'd love to engage you uh, on these thoughts. And I would just ask your prayers just to be really faithful to prayer and, and seek God's face during this time and ask him to revitalize his people and, and revitalize this nation. You know, there, there's never been a time in my lifetime that I believe and have a deep resolve that God needs his people to be on fire for him to make a difference in this land. Amen. A time for God's people to pray and be sanctified unto him. Amen. Hey, Jared, do we have any questions tonight? Do we have any good chats back there? I don't, I don't see them tonight. Any questions of anybody that's here tonight? Anything anybody wants to ask? Hey, we love you. I hope you're encouraged in the Lord. If you need prayer, boy, send your prayer requests to Life Community Church at office uh, at gmail.com. Life Community Church at office. Life Community Church office at gmail.com. Okay? If you just go on our website, lifecommunitychurch.net, you, you can find those addresses. Send us your prayer request. Uh, Sheila does an amazing job just putting those prayer requests up. So right now, I just want to just take a moment and just pray. Lord God, wash over us. Lord, we need you every single day. We need you to wash over us. We need you to renew our minds, renew our hearts, renew our resolve. Lord, just take the, the vision that is in our head and drive it down deep into our heart, Lord, and let it be a true conviction. So it's not just something that we think is a good idea, but it is something that must happen. We, we must see your people revitalized. Lord, let us have that resolve in the name which is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us tonight.